Hello and welcome back to the How to Make Any Game Mechanics series. If you're new around here, in this series I create video game mechanics suggested by you guys. I really do try to make it as easily understandable as possible, but I know my method might not be perfect. In the end, I always try and create something with the intention to be as usable as possible. And as always, if you guys run into any hiccups along the way, there's a link to the GitHub for this episode and every other episode in the description below. And with that, let's get into it. So in Unity here, I have created a new scene for episode four. And with that opened up, I'm going to right click, create a 2D square. And let's name it to player. Next, I am going to create a floor. So I'm just going to duplicate our player and call it ground. Okay, perfect. Let's give our ground a box collider 2D. We can scale it and move it down. And then our player can have a box collider 2D and a rigid body 2D. I'm going to borrow the player controller from the first episode. So it's just called player controller. And we can use transform movement with the movement speed. Okay, so when I hit play, I should fall to the floor and be able to move around. I am falling and I am moving. Okay, perfect. So this is going to be a nice little backdrop so we can run into our collectible. So I'm just going to uncheck play, right click, create a new C sharp script, and let's call this collectible script. And let's just open this up in VS Code. Okay, in VS Code, let's come up here and make our first variable. Let's make a serialized field, private, and let's say int, and let's say coins. So we're gonna be collecting coins in this demo. Now, usually there's two ways that you can do collectibles. You can make it so the player keeps track of the collectibles and all of that information for the collisions, or you can have the collectibles have all that information for the collisions. Generally speaking, it is better practice to keep the collectible information on the player. Now you might be scratching your head, maybe wondering why. Well, this is because if you have the collectible information on the collectibles themselves, you'll have every single collectible in your game running some sort of a script, which you know, that's maybe not ideal. I think having one script on the player that keeps track of everything makes a little bit more sense. So let's get rid of start and update here because we won't be needing that. And let's make a on trigger enter. 2D. I'm going to space this because that's how I like it. And let's say if other dot game object dot tag equals collectible what we're going to do is we are going to say coins plus plus which just means plus one and then we are going to destroy the other dot game object so the other dot game object in this case is going to be the coin that we're touching so as long as it has a trigger, when we touch into it, it'll add one to the coins and then it'll destroy the coin. Okay, let's head back into Unity. Back in Unity, let's click on our player, scroll down, and let's add the collectible script to it. And we can see that we have zero coins. So let's make the coin. Right click, create, 2D, and let's do a circle. And I'm just going to call this coin. I'm going to make it yellow. I'm going to scale it down a little bit because I just want it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to add a collectible tag. Collectible. Click on my coin and assign that collectible tag. Next, we're going to need a circle collider 2D. And we have to make sure we check the is trigger checkbox. All right, let's move our coin downward so our player can actually interact with it. Click on our player, scroll down, and let's hit play. Our player falls, and we can move left and right, and let's walk into our coin. 
And in fact, it has now destroyed itself and one has been added to the coins. Perfect, this is exactly what we want. Although having the coins sitting here really isn't that useful to the player as they're not gonna be able to see this value. So why don't we display the coin value up in the top left? Let's uncheck play, right click, let's create UI and let's use Text Mesh Pro. Now I haven't used Text Mesh Pro in this project yet, so I'm gonna to have to import TMP Essentials. All right, with the essentials all done, let's close out of this window, click on our canvas, and let's make it screen space camera. We can now drag and drop our camera into the render camera slot. Now the canvas is overlaid onto our camera. So let's take this text here and we can drag it up, move it over, put it wherever you like. I'm going to use this rec transform over here and just anchor it to the top left. Perfect. So now we have our text up here and I'm just going to default it to say zero. Okay, perfect. You'll see TextMesh Pro has all these awesome options. You can stylize it however you want, but I'm just going to leave it as the default. All right, let's go back into VS Code and go back into our collectible script. Back in our collectible script, because we're using TextMesh Pro, we're going to need to come up here and add a using statement. Using TM Pro. Perfect. Now we can come below our coins and make another serialized field. Private text mesh pro do GUI. And let's call this coin display. All we're going to do is we're just going to drag in our text into this container. Now, when we collect a coin, after it gets destroyed, let's add one to our coin value. So coin display dot text equals coins dot to string. And all this is doing is just converting our integer into something that can actually be displayed. Let's go back into Unity and check it out. Back in Unity, let's click on our player, scroll down, and drag and drop our text into the text slot. Perfect. Now, let's hit play, and our text says zero, and when I walk into the coin, it now says one. All is right in the world, all is perfect. We've just won the lottery, we're now rich, we have one coin, we're doing great. Okay, so we haven't really done anything with our coin, but in something like Mario, when they hit 99 coins, all they do is just give Mario an extra life. So you would have to communicate to some sort of player controller that you've now hit your 99 coins, reset it to zero, and just increase your life by one. Hopefully you can see the game applications to a method like this. And with that, this episode's complete. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a comment suggesting a game mechanic you guys would like to see me make. And as always, I'll see you next week.